You would have been paid out <laughs> shitloads. Did you think you'd play AFL again at that point? Did you get the message? What do I do here? A bit of adversity. You give us effort, you give us. Tell you what, we might have to start shortening that. For some reason, it just feels awkward. <laughs> it feels now, really long. Uh, back chat, welcome. Powered by Fleet Network this year. Good friends down at Fleet Network. One of those, a former teammate of this man right here, yes. Garrick Ibbotson, running the show down there, I've been told, at Fleet Network. We're very happy and honoured to be joined today by Kepler Bradley. Kepler, how are you, mate? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. Mate, thank Anytime. you, mate. Now, our, I know you're a big, big, big fan of back chat, so you'll know this is coming, but just in case you're not, uh, greatest sporting achievement. We do this off the top, every guest we've ever had in here. We want, to, we want to know your greatest sporting achievement, not on the football field. We know you've been a rangy uh, footballer, high draft pick, Lark medalist. Like He's done yep. a fair bit on the footy field, played for both Freo, Essendon, um, you know, he can play footy. We well, know that, Dan. Yeah. We want to know what you can do off the footy field. Greatest sporting achievement, juniors, adulthood. This or, last week, whenever, it doesn't matter. So growing up, I, I don't know if this is normally a story or it's just a one-word answer. Story. But, but growing up, um, I sort of loved footy and I played footy and, and I wasn't too bad at it. So my old man was pretty happy with, with the way I was performing on the field and um, this sort of year eight, my mates made a cricket side, um, so there was about six blokes um, that played down in Kingsley, and I went outdoor cricket, and I wanted to play, and um, I, was, I wasn't great at cricket, so I sort <laughs> of asked Dad one one day when I got home from school and said, "Look, boys are making a cricket side. Would love to play another sport. You know, would love to have a bat and a bowl and, and play with your mates." And he goes, "There's one problem with that," and I'm like, "Oh, okay. What 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 are we? What, what's what's the issue?" He goes, "You know how you when you come home from footy." And you just shake your head and go, why is this bloke playing? I said, yeah. He goes, that's what your mates will be saying about you. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. Well, it looks like I, uh, I won't play then. <laughs> anyway, a few years later, we, we, we made an indoor cricket side and, and thank God Dad let me play. And we played a grand final. I got out 10 times in the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> so you were the kid. You yeah. were the one. I was that that's, kid. That's and negative then, 50. Ex well, exactly. And we still won. Wow. <laughs> So, oh, we had some good players, so that's why it <laughs> even stood out even more that I wasn't good enough. But um, I, I've never really played other sports, but down the track when I finished playing AFL footy, um, again, my mates were still playing cricket, and I, I went out there, and I didn't bowl, and I came in number 11, So, but I made 18 not out. So yeah. that's nice. probably the yeah, best. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's, that's not finished out. off out yeah. on, on a good note. Could have been but 100, you never would have Exactly known. right. Have you ever made 100 down? No, I made a 50 once. Did you? Yep. I'm yeah. going to ask about your batting prowess. Like we've heard a lot about on this podcast about your bowling prowess. Used to use prowess. a V100, no, no, no meat to the bat. The ball wouldn't go very far. I had small arms, so it was just a lot of running. Mm. So it was a really hard earned fifty. Tell me about the bowling. Five for sixteen in a grand final, uh, under twelves. Chil B Hill Cricket Club. BIG, I would have thought. Uh, yeah, BIG. So they gave BIG, one out. Norm gave, Smith. I gave, I got a trophy with the ball. Which yeah. the ball's gone missing, by the way. Which I'm really hurt about Anyone recently. Seen it? Anyone yeah. seen this cricket ball? It's gone missing. It was part of the trophy. Uh, we probably would have played Kingsley actually at Stuart Hill Cricket yeah. Club. We've yeah. been in the same um, same areas. Yeah. But. Well, he didn't play because he couldn't play. Yeah, no, I, wouldn't yeah. Let him. I wasn't allowed to. So <laughs> I was watching. It was I was there, but I wasn't playing. So Garrick, who's down at Fleet Network, yes. um, good man. Happy, Very good man. Happy with his action. So yes. he sent in a few questions. So you might change that answer after we're done with you today, <laughs> Kepler. So uh, we we're asking also your first car. You remember your first car? Oh, it was a white shoebox Ford. Um, it was really average. I was a sheet metal worker, earning 195 bucks in the hand, um, and I knew it, it cost me about 80 bucks to fill up. But a real <laughs> super old uh, Ford. It was yeah, shoebox shape, white. I don't know my cars that well, but no, neither. Um, I was sort of yeah, eight months into that, and lucky I went to Essendon and bought an Orion um, <laughs> because it wouldn't have lasted too much longer. <laughs> so you're over here, a West Australian boy, playing for Kingsley Footy Club growing up. Yeah, yeah. Premier, Did Premiership player for them. Uh, I, I I played up a grade one year, and we and we and we won it. Um, so that was good. But um, I've only sort of besides that one, well, I won a flag at West Perth. Yes, uh, in 2003, but. It's been very slim pickings with finals for for, for Kate Bradley uh, throughout his whole career. So, what, what year were you at Kingsley Football Club? Uh, oh, I was, would have been there from ninety three playing Oz kick or free yeah. ball back then um, up until two thousand and one, maybe so two thousand two. Did you know people that were involved in the Bali incident? No, no, right. they, they, they were a bit um, older than me, I think, um, but. 
but um, no, I because that was a big deal no, at the club. That absolutely, was, that was yeah. crazy. And it's still sort of the memorial at the front, yeah. and it still gets remembered to this day. But yeah, sort of what a what a tragedy when you hear about that. But let alone when you sort of been involved, yeah, you know, with with with, with those guys at, um, in some capacity. So um, yeah, it's still to this day we you know the boys when they go into Kingsley Footy Club, it's all sort of on the wall. So so we don't forget about them, but what a what a tragedy. Mm. So you represented Western Australia in the under-18s. As I mentioned off the top, Lark Medalist, best player of the tournament. Yeah. Talk us through it. Well, Where were you I playing? think my dad what? was on the vote. I mean, dad must have been voting for it. <laughs> what were you playing? Because you, you, you played all positions in the AFL. What were you as a junior? So growing up, I was a rangy midfielder in, in sort of when I was playing for Kingsley. And then um, West Perth... Uh, Colts. I was I was sort of a, a, a midfield, a winger, half forward. I was never really a key position player. I, I just I could accumulate the footy, but defending probably wasn't me my mm. best attribute. So, um, and then the state carnivals came around, and and um, I think they sort of thought, look, he's six foot six. He needs to play in a key position role because that's where he'll be playing if he gets drafted. So he's tall. Because he's tall. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they played me at centre half back. But I didn't actually defend at centre half back. I just did my own thing, and I was lucky enough to to sort of get on the end of a fair bit of it. Um, and it wasn't till you know if you do, if you do a deep dive into that year, and you know we played three games in five days, which these day and age I think the carnival goes for ten weeks. So <laughs> um, it's sort of you know your, your survival of the fittest. But um, Adam Cooney did his hemi um, at the start of the last game, and he he clearly was the best player in the in the, in the country at that time. Uh, but it just so happened that he hurt himself and, and I was able to play okay and get, get enough votes and scraped in, I think. I think I beat him by one vote or something like that. But. Don't you reckon that's crazy? Because I remember in my state stuff as well, that you play, you'd literally play three games, three full games in three, six days, day in between. Now, oh, that they, you, would, they would yeah. have your head. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was, you sort of land Sunday and you're Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're out Saturday. It was, it was quite amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, when you're a draft hopeful and you, you had a bad week... That's almost your yeah. draft year over. Yeah. Um, so at least now they sort of stagger it, and and you know you you know if you have a bad game, you you probably have a week or two to recover and, and go again. But back in the day, they 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 didn't care. They just threw you out there. And I got to admit, I was a bit exhausted by the last game, but I think everyone was at that point when they played three in a row. What sort of um, teammate were you back there? Did you, you like having a beer? I mean, you would have been seventeen, I'm assuming. So maybe not, but be a Parents were really strict on me with, with drinking growing up. So, well, thank God, really, because I don't mind a beer now, which, <laughs> which um, yeah, I think most blokes do. But yeah. um, now I, I, um, I don't know, I was sort of – I just loved footy back, yeah. back in the day. I, I mean, um, growing up, I, I was that oblivious to playing AFL footy. I used to watch Tony Lockett and Paul Kelly was a Sydney, mad Sydney Swans fan. And um, it never clicked that I could potentially one day be there. I just thought that was just way out of – my reach and and um, I just played it because I love me mates and you know you you sort of okay at it and you're getting a kick and and the enjoyment but it wasn't till you sort of draft year and, and then you know I went to the state carnival not expecting anything and you and you win an award and then all of a sudden everyone's saying that it's doable um, I was sort of shit in my pants but, <laughs> but it, yeah it sort of hit me pretty pretty quickly and um, yeah sort of in the eye when I got drafted and that sort of thing and I've always been a bloke that. You know, on the field, you, you try your guts out, but off the field, I, I was, I probably wasn't the most dedicated bloke. I mean, if, if a mate rang me up and asked me for a beer, I'd go and have a beer and I wouldn't in the back of my head going, oh, it's a six-day break and rah, rah, rah. I'd just go and have a beer and then rock up to train and try my artist and, and that's sort of the way I did it. <laughs> a lot of guys these days, you know, notepads and pens and they're weighing their water and they're weighing their food and <laughs> fuck, I can't keep up, but... <laughs> Weighing but, their water. <laughs> you got to drink four litres or something, don't you? Um, but, yeah, I, I was just one of those guys that, that that side of things didn't really worry me. You know, if a mate rang me up and wanted a, a beer or a catch-up or a coffee or whatever, like I, just, I had my game game routine, but other than that, yeah. after games, it was sort of free-for-all for me as long as I rocked up Monday and tried my artist. That's that's what I did. I, I tried my hardest on and off the field, mate. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I like that. My, my sort of guy. Drafted number six, 2003, to Essendon. So you have that carnival, you're best on, and you become a te- top ten draft pick. And it sounds like you're sort of, you know, what am I, what am I fucking doing here, basically? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was. Yeah. Number six, I was just – I sat down with Kevin Sheedy uh, a month before it and um, at the height, and he, he – um, me and my dad were there having breakfast with him, and he – 
you know, he was going through all the history of Essendon Footy Club and that sort of thing. And then right at the end of the meeting, he said, we're not picking you up, so all the best. <laughs> I said, what a, what a waste of time that was. <laughs> but that, anyway, you, you grow to learn that they're the sorts of things that Was he testing you? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And I just said, oh, what, what the fuck? Yeah, if you're not picking me up, hopefully someone else does and <laughs> life moves on. But they they originally, you know, they you know, ended up picking me up, which was which was fantastic. But, yeah, I sort of moved away for that week um, in the state carnival away from home and, and, and that's the only time I really was away from home. And then all of a sudden you get drafted and you have to live in Melbourne. So I didn't know how to take money out of my bank. I fucking... Got sorry, you let us swear. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, you get put with a foster family that you've never met before, and 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 you know, it was just all these things that were were happening, and and then you're just constantly surrounded by footy, so you don't have your mate outlets, and I I sort of struggled a fair bit with with that sort of thing, but but um, yeah, you sort of walk right whilst into Essen and um, and then sit next to Matthew Lloyd and James Heard walks past you, and then Dustin Fletcher's doing up his shoelaces, and you're just thinking. Holy moly, it's 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 sort of real, you know. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a shock uh, once it all sort of once it all sort of happened. Happened pretty quickly. So Kevin Shady's your coach. Yeah. Yes. What's he like? Uh, I, he he was um, because we had a number of very very good players. They, they would, Eston was just, was just coming out of that era where they were being pretty successful through ninety nine, two thousand two thousand one, and played a few grand finals and premierships and that stuff like that. So, I've been coached by Ross Lyon, who's very you know, strategic and and sort of play your role, but but um, Sheeds was more sort of yeah, he had a basic sort of game plan, but let the let the superstars do their thing, um, and you know you just you see Hurdy kick four and Anzac Day game and Lloydie do his thing and Fletcher and Scotty Lucas and the Johnson brother uh, Johnson boys and that so it yeah he he, he was a, he was a good coach, but he was sort of coming to the end. He almost yeah. looked a bit worn out towards the end when yeah. I got there, so. Uh, but I was lucky enough to play in his uh, last game at Subiaco Oval um, and heard his last game. And yes. Scotty Lucas, yeah. who didn't get a kick until the last quarter. Didn't he kick eight in the he last? He kicked seven in the last quarter. <laughs> now, I like to think I was a decoy that day and, and sort of played my role, but he was phenomenal. Because I think – I can't remember what year that was. 2000 – when did I get delisted? 2007. Seven, 2007. Yeah, he, 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 I think he had one goal, a couple of kicks to three quarter time. We were thirty points down. Hurdy, Hurdy, and Sheedy's last game. He's come out and he's he's kicked seven in the last quarter and won us the game. I think we won by ten or fifteen points. Uh, B and F night, he didn't even get the most votes. Who did? Hurdy. He must have had a kicker in his contract. <laughs> <don't he? laughs> so what were you doing? You were, you were in the fourth line, were you? Just oh, I think wave, I was sort of, yeah, sort of just <laughs> taking the most dangerous back out of uh, out of the way, so Scotty Lucas could clunk a few. But um, it was actually like, yeah, one of the. I haven't watched it back, but I remember being there, just going like almost a spectator, best seats in the house, going, "This is this is the best, one of the best quarters you'll ever serve of footy." That so. was your that was your last game for Essendon. What about your first? Remember that. I do. I played on um, Warren Treadrow. Well, I played on my – me and Michael Pedigree got drafted together. So yep. I started on Michael Pedigree and then and then went to Warren Treadrow, who was relatively pretty handy. Um, yes. And I don't know if Josh Carr remembers this, but sort of I think it was second or third quarter and I was running and he's given me the biggest punch in the guts I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and, you know, you're playing out for footy, so I was trying to, like, disguise it, but, mate, it was one of the biggest hits I've ever – Ever had so I certainly remember that. Um, <laughs> Did you give him something back? Oh just... no, nah, I was killed over on the ground, but I was trying to stand up to try and be tough. But yeah, he got me that good. I was uh, carrying on for a little bit, sort of put me off for the rest of the game. But um, yeah, Port Adelaide against Adelaide, we lost my hundred, I think, ninety nine points. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I've got a good memory, don't I? Jeez. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Five disposal, I reckon four of them were ineffective. <laughs> You had five. Yeah. You had one mark and five disposals. Well done. What's it, what's it like lining up alongside some of those Essendon greats? Because, like, now in, in hindsight, well, they'll go down as legends for the game. But mm. at so, the time – So Kepler. So yeah. Kepler, of course. Um, at the time, were you aware of just how big it was playing with these guys? I did. Yeah, it was sort of really intimidating. Like, and Scully, you'd know, that champions don't come – become champions by fluke. Like Matthew Lloyd, 
pissing down raining windy hill we've 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 you know we've just finished a two-hour session um footy session everyone walks in because they're wet and cold and he's out there with the property bloke getting balls smashed into his hands and the noise his hands would make was just phenomenal um but like it's no coincidence he went then went out in front of ninety thousand people and full steam ahead clunks them and kicks you know 100 goals a year quite regularly so um and Hurdy was the same sort of ground balls and stuff like that but the, the the champions don't become champions by fluke that that's sort of one thing that you know stuck at me when when when, when i got to essendon I, I was just amazed by you know being in, involved with these blokes but then the stuff they're doing behind the scenes that not many people see and then game day they obviously a lot of people see it but it's it's no fluke that you know, even Matthew Pavlich, that I played with, um, Nathan Fife, like they don't become champions by fluke. So we had um, Dustin Fletcher on the pod a little while back. Were you both mates? Because you just strike me as someone that you would be mates with Fletch. You seem you both seem pretty pretty easy go lucky kind of. You know, happy to happy to have a crack on the field and go as hard as you like, but yeah. like having a beer off it. He's an absolute legend of a bloke. Yeah. Like he. Um, ever since would, I got older, absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, like, <clears throat> and he'd be ten years, but maybe more, yeah. um, older than me. But he, like, he was that good, and in, like, it just he was that good of a bloke. And anyone that walked through the door, he'd always have have the time of day for you. Um, there was no coincidence, I think, with his training methods that he lasted twenty one years or whatever he he sort of lasted um, because you. <laughs> You'd go in the weights room and there's Matthew Lloyd pumping out 130 k's <laughs> on the bench press and there's uh, Fletcher in the corner doing 12 kilo bloody shoulder presses <laughs> and just flinging them up like that. So that sort of wasn't wasn't his go. Um, you know, he, he trained relatively pretty hard but, you know, I remember we had a um, – we used to do the 3.2k around Princess Park. Yeah. Again, it was my first 3.2 so I sort of wanted to do pretty well and – um, we got put into our groups anyway, go, time trial, and I'm running, 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 running. And Fletch sort of runs, 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 and then veers off. And I'm thinking, where's he going? <laughs> veers off to the water fountain. Just a quick little <laughs> slurp. <laughs> About 1,500 metres in, quick little slurp and back back on his way. But but he never did it in an arrogant way. It was just like I, – I think he was one of those guys that if, roll the footies out and I'm – you know, I'll, 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 I'll do me bit. But, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say he was the most dedicated bloke off the field in terms of weights and stuff like that, but but it almost kept him fresh enough to sustain, you know, his, his, um, his career. His, his, well, yeah, absolutely. Well, he yeah, was thirsty. He got, yeah. thirsty. he got a drink. <laughs> absolutely. That would, that's what yeah. he would have said, right? Correct. <laughs> what absolutely. Drink. What are you doing? I'm thirsty. <laughs> thirsty? I'm halfway through. I'm doing the math. I need a drink of water. So I'll do that. Oh, it's very good. So that 2007, that last game that you played, you played four games that year. Um, Mel Michael came to the footy club. Yes. Paddy Ryder got drafted. Yep. So I got some tall timber and you didn't play a lot of footy, but you won the best and fairest in the VFL that year. I did. I uh, um, I did it under severe duress. I, I, I basically got told about round five um, that I wasn't going to play for the footy club again. Right. Uh, the, the, the by, year- by who and why? Uh, oh... I think Dodoro was thereabouts. I think He's Sheeds might have been in the room, but 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 um, I basically got told off the cuff that you're going to struggle to play another game at the footy club. So I sort of it derailed me a little bit, um, and I sort of had my head around right. I'm just going to play the rest of the year in, in in the VFL. The previous year, I wanted to get to Freo, and it and it sort of fell through, which was which was fine. I was pretty homesick and desperately wanted to come home, and um, yeah, I sort of. Went off the rails for that little period. I was literally eating McDonald's on the way to VFL games and had, had a couple of beers when I probably shouldn't have, um, <laughs> to the point where mum and dad had to fly over and make sure I finished the year off. Um, but then lucky enough on the field, I was actually going okay and getting a kick. And um, Lucky enough, Frio, at the end of that year, um, sort of invited me to train and then I trained with them and then they ended up Draft me again, so not many people get drafted twice, do they? No, <laughs> I saw that. So pick pick sixty nine, you were in two thousand eight. I only slid down sixty three <laughs> spots in four years. That's pretty good. So that so that period of two thousand seven, you don't mind speaking about it. So when you say off the rails and you eat macas on the way, was that a like a like a like a self implosion? Was it a like a bit of a fuck you to the footy club? Was it like? Can you reflect on that? Uh, I 
I um, yeah, I, I think obviously disappointment that I probably knew that it was the end of the end of that year, um, and I felt I played, a, 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 you know, I was playing okay footy, um, and I suppose yeah, it was sort of um, self sabotage really. I, I just I really missed home. I, I really wanted to get home, and the year before I, I sort of tried to do that, but it was unsuccessful. But um, you know, we talk about sort of on the footy field, you know, go your hardest and that sort of thing. But I really struggled to then be surrounded by your teammates again over in Melbourne. Like I I sort of wanted to surround myself with, you know, schoolmates and family and friends and stuff like that and get – I wasn't necessarily a massive footy head. I, I did enjoy it, but, you know, you need your outlets. and Yeah. Um, yeah, I just um, wasn't enjoying it and just sort of almost thought, what's the, what's the point? And I'm just going to, yeah, enjoy – well, I'm tr- trying to get through it, and I th- the way I've sort of got through it was having a few beers and eating some food sometimes when I shouldn't have. But and, you won um, the bayonet. It wasn't like I, you I did, fell yeah. in a heap on the footy field. Nah, no, nah, I yeah, I I was playing some o- yeah, I, I, was, I mean, I was playing some okay footy, yeah. So and and even to the point where, and, and I'm still amazed to this day that, um, Frio wanted to trade for me. And I think it was pick 40 or 55. I'm not too sure what the pick was. And Essendon shut it down. And then when the trade period finished, I got delisted like five minutes after. But yeah, I was a bit a bit weird. So Makes uh, no sense. Yeah, so I went to Freo for nothing eventually, but they could have got a pick for for me. So it was all, it was all a bit sort of a bit weird in 2007. Yeah. But I was glad that Freo took a pun on me and I was happy to – Hopefully repay them back in some capacity over <laughs> seven years. After uh, the trade didn't happen and you and you know, Essendon shut it down, do you think you'd play AFL again at that point? Uh, I knew that I had a couple of teams interested. Like when I when I sort of knew earlier that year that I, I wasn't going to play a lot of footy um, but at AFL level. Uh, you know, I was I was told that uh, Freo were, were still interested. But obviously, I had to pull my weight and play some okay footy in the in the, in the twos, um, and I think North. I think my manager sort of said North might be keen. So it, it was slim pickings. It wasn't like people were, you know, <laughs> diving over themselves to get to me. <laughs> yeah. And I knew. I sort of knew that um, it, it wasn't going to be easy. And if I was going to get on a list, it'd be for one or two years, and then I'm going to have to fight and scrap. So that's the sort of way my career went for the whole journey of the 11 years i think i signed eight contracts in 11 years it was oh, yeah. it was quite phenomenal that you know you don't get a bald head like that if you <laughs> if you're getting five year deals eh? <laughs> <laughs> so oh, it's, I was um, the same, mate. It, it sort of and then you so, sort of get out of it and build build your resilience quite a bit you know yeah. it's um you know life outside of footy and, and you sort of go through some hard times but i reflect sometimes the, the stuff i've been through at afl level and you know you're pretty well equipped for it after you know, all the stresses and strains that you you sort of have. Yeah, that's an important point, isn't it? What, like what you're saying about on the field, off the field, um, I can resonate with that as well. And especially once you get out of the game, like you just said, sometimes like a lot of the ups and downs you go through, um, there'd be certain guys you've played with and certainly guys I've played with that probably never never got dropped in their lives. You know, hey, you're a top 10 pick, but I was about to say, like a top 10 pick, everything's on a platter, <laughs> they get out and then the real world hits and it's like, yeah. What do I do here? A bit of adversity. Yeah. So there's there's certainly positives. I know maybe at the time you don't get the plot like the pundits from everyone, but yeah. And I and I reckon it, it almost it helps you um, sort of when you get out of footy transition into real life because like for, for me anyway, when when you have all those ups and downs, you're getting dropped, you're not getting a contract, you know, you you've been delisted, and then you get drafted, and then you it's pretty hectic when you think about it, but. It sort of helped helps you transition out of footy. I, I feel a lot of guys that, as you say, they, they get picked in week in week out. They're on eight hundred grand for you know eight years, and then all of a sudden they're in the real world. It's, you know, it, it's sort of hard to adapt that financial. You've been put on a pedestal, and now you're in the real world, and you're you're sort of everyone's equal. You know, so um, I found that sort of helped me. I probably went the hard way about it, but <laughs> it sort of helped me transition to life after footy. What was your order at Macca's just to finish that off? What's oh, double quarter pounder was yeah. me. So I'd get, yeah, two of them. Thick shake or and, we're talking nah, soft shake? I had a game. <laughs> so I would have like a can of, co- a bottle of thing, a cup, cup of coke. <laughs> a bit of caffeine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't worry the caffeine table. And then I'd line up on Zach Dawson at Box Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I'd kick, I'd kick, I'd kick two goals, I think five one day again on him. <laughs> 
So it's yeah, Dawes. Yeah. He become a teammate once you go to Freo. He did, yes. So two thousand eight, you go to Freo. Like you said, delisted, pick sixty nine in the two thousand eight draft. <laughs> What's that uh, group of players and team to walk into under Ross Lyon? No, it was no, Mark no, Harvey. Yeah, it was too. It was halves. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it was. It was. Oh, I just wanted to impress after you know probably having the year that I didn't want to have. Um, and sort of had a pretty good preseason, and and um, and want to impress. I, I, from memory, you might have the stats, but I think I only played twelve games or something that year. But Nine games first year. I got knocked out pretty badly in South Africa. Um, playing big camps. Sean Hampson. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't playing cricket. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might have been rolling around the streets of South Africa. Oh, uh, Sean, I've, I've came off the uh, came off the bench and went for a grand ball, and uh, Sean Hampson playing for Carlton. His hip hit me in the head, and I actually hit. A cricket pitch. My head hit the oh, cricket pitch that I was trying to soften up. But um, I was out for for a, a long time and, um, to, you know, an ambulance drove on. I didn't know this, but then they pulled a kid out that must have hurt himself and <laughs> chucked me in there. <laughs> what? What and, did you um, think? Yeah. Well, it was on YouTube once upon a time. I don't know if it's still there. but um, And then I went in there and I, I woke up with big Kenny Withers uh, in the ambulance behind me. And I only been at the club for three months. And I'm sort of like, why are you in your hotel room? He's like, mate, you've played footy. And I'm like, no, I haven't. He's like, yeah, you got knocked out in the first couple of seconds. So um, I then I then got hit a couple of times after that at, at waffle level and I didn't start till about round six. But, yeah, ended up playing, I think, nine games. I think the last sort of five or six I, I played. But, um, yeah, managed to sort of scrape through and keep keep going. Um, concussion and, and and head knocks, big big in the AFL now, do you? Look back on that and worried, not worried. That's footy. I I I put myself out there. Yeah, like it's it's um you know I hear all the stuff and I I've got no symptoms or anything like that. But I think when you sign up to footy, you know there's an element of risk and all doctors do their best and and um and you all you want to do is help your teammate mate out. It doesn't mm. matter who who you are. So when you have a heavy, heavy hit and you used to come off and get assessed and you'd always sort of put a bit of mayo on it, or I did anyway. So um, if anyone sort of came to me and asked me to join a petition or anything like that, I, I just, yeah, wouldn't be interested because I was the I was the fellow that put myself out there. That's correct. So over the next sort of three, four years, like you said, I don't think you ever played every game in a year. No. At AFL level. No. I was just yeah, getting dropped. Keeping myself on my We're getting toes. dropped, injured? Both. Yeah. Both. A fair bit of dropness. Drop, drop was sort of my, uh, yeah, my playing card, I suppose. Um, what was that? Uh, it's funny, you know, like I'm, I'm sort of involved in footy now and um, I sort of reflect on why I would get dropped when I was playing and, and I, I just wasn't where a big man should be. Like I was sort of trying to, you know, as you're playing, you're getting wrapped up in disposals and – Kicking goals, and you, you, you know, you, you want to impact in that in that way. But I sit there and go, "Wow, I don't reckon I would have done that when I was playing." Like long down the line, and bring the ball to ground. And in my head, I was like, "I need to sort of get the footy." And you know, you're leading to not spots you should be leading to. And <laughs> and I'm sort of thinking, "Wow, if I'd have just had someone say, mate, just be down the line. Don't worry about your disposals. Bring it to bring it to ground. Play your role. You know, we don't have too many big fellas out here. So, so I reckon that was sort of my main." Issue was yeah. was I was sort of leading for the footy and it'd be long down the line and Ballas is trying out body bloody scarlet and <laughs> and then Kemp gets dropped the following week you know <laughs> so yeah I, I, yeah if I reflect back at, at my time at Freo I certainly I would uh, I, I would have been sort of playing a bit more as a big man not not um, not trying to get the footy you won much. the you won the goal kicking in two thousand and eleven mm. on twenty five. <laughs> It's a massive amount, isn't it? It's, it's sort of Charlie Kerno sort of stuff, isn't it? <laughs> in one, in two games against West Coast, yeah. he kicked that. He kicked nineteen. Nineteen. Two, two I beat him by seven. <laughs> so I win. Um, I've got dropped that year too. So um, yeah, no, I think I played. Oh, I don't know what it was, but fourteen games. But yeah, I, I played more as a deep forward and managed to get on the end of a couple. But but. Um, I don't know where we were on the ladder or anything like that, but obviously slim pickings because I think Maney and Pav were around the mark as well. You, um, you drew with Chris May, 25 each. Yeah. Well, I keep having a go at him because he played 20-odd 20, 20 games that year and I played 14 or 15. So <laughs> it's like, mate, pull your head in. <laughs> I'm count back. It should be just my name on the – Any danger, <laughs> mate. Got to contribute, Chris. And then Brett B and F9, I was waiting for me trophy. No trophy. Why not? Oh, I don't know. Hang on. Why not? 
Where, Probably because I kicked 25 and they're like, that's not even worth it. <laughs> hang on, hang on. So on this podcast, we've tracked down a few things over mm. the time. Brad Shepard didn't have his All-Australian blazer. We got that for him, mate, so that was sorted. Yeah. Would you like to put it on record that you'd like a trophy for the 2011 leading goal kicker? I don't think it's worth a trophy, but they don't give a trophy. If I had to kick seven, if I had on Charlie Kerno, potentially. But, but so they I'm don't – no trophy. There's just I'm, no trophy. Yeah, no. I think they, they must ride her on a board somewhere. We, so. could, we could call it the Kepler Bradley. <laughs> Bradley leading goal kicker award. It's actually impressive to win yeah. that over with 25 goals. Well, I was trying. that's what I was trying to do, just trying to kick as least as I could, but win <laughs> at the same time. It's like golf. Yeah. It. And then try and get dropped at the same time. It was actually really hard. Like, yeah, if you're at sports bet trying to work that out, you would, you would have been paid out shitloads. <laughs> what's Ross like? When does he get to the club? What's he like when he enters? Is he good for your career or bad for your career? Uh, oh, I reckon two years in, so maybe 2010 maybe or 11. Yeah. Um, fantastic. i don't have a bad word to say about him. He was strategically the best coach I've I've had and seen and witnessed, and quite a lot of stuff I do um, at Claremont or you know day to day is is stuff that he's sort of taught me. So mm. he's very strategic and role driven. And and um, but the nice the, the refreshing thing about me is when when you sort of when I went into meetings with previous coaches, you you know you. The guys that are sort of, you know, pick 15 to 22 picked in the side used to just get roasted for turning the footy over, not being in the right spot. But he didn't care. It was quite refreshing. You'd be, you could be Pav, um, who's never been yelled at in his life, or you could be me, who signed a one-year deals. If you weren't in the right spot at the right time or kicking the ball in the right, you know, direction, he, he'd, he'd have, a, have a stern word to you. So um, I don't think, um, you know, that's not that doesn't suit a lot of players that sort of, you know, in their careers, but I found that you know his, his sternness and standards around how to play, and you know what the way he he believed that um, would help us win. Um, it didn't matter who you are, which was which was quite um, refreshing. But we we wouldn't have made a grand final if we had any other anyone else coaching. He was he was quite phenomenal. Any good cooks from him? Oh, there, there's heaps, <laughs> heaps. Heaps of good cooks. You he's cop the, you on the back he's end. He's the cook. <laughs> <laughs> Were you on the back end of any? Oh, I was on the back end. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The mental imagery was a um, was was sort of just coming into sort of um, fine. Yeah, and and that was Vogue. he 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 loved he loved mental imagery and um, yeah, it was sort of six months into um, him being there. Um, he sort of got we – we had a team meeting and he sort of got in front and said, right, Scoey, what do you do for your mental imagery preparation for games? And you'd go, oh, yeah, I'd, you know, I'd do it, even whether it's bullshit or not, but, yeah, three <laughs> times a week and Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Sit in the park. Go sit in the park and, then, uh, Pav, what do you do? Oh, you know, I get the yoga mat out and I sort of, you know, stretch and think about my role and, and then sort of ask me and it caught me off guard a little bit because, I again, I, I wasn't sort of – that wasn't my go – the mental imagery and yoga and stuff. And he asked me and I sort of said, oh, well, I, I do mine in the shower before I leave to go to a game. And then the whole room went quiet and I'm like, oh, I've said the wrong thing. <laughs> That's what I used to do. He's like, hang on. <laughs> so you've been 10 years in the system and you're doing mental imagery in the shower. And I'm like, y yeah, yeah, I sort of, no, 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 no. For any young kid in this room, if you're doing mental imagery in the shower after 10 years on an AFL this year, you're fucking kidding yourself. <laughs> so I was like, oh, wow. Oh, I should have just said that I was on the beach doing yoga three times a week. And what was his issue with the shower? Uh, don't know. I, it's I mean, efficient. I, 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 it was efficient. Oh, that's what I used to do. I used to sort of block out the footy until, you know, you have a shower game day and you sort of think, right, um, I'm, I'm, I'm playing full forward and chop out in the ruck. I remember one day... We played on each other. I was my, ask, I was ask. my soul and you, we were rucking together. Do you remember that? Yeah. The sole purpose of me playing was to stop Nat and Nui from tapping the ball. <laughs> so I was running up. Remember all four of us used to, we were all just like running up, just crashing into each other. <laughs> <It's> going third <laughs> So to this day, that sticks into my mind. But yeah, that 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 day there. So I would have been in the shower before that, going right. Oh, Scoey's on me. I'll go up there and I'll you know hit Nat Nui and that, yeah. And I'll be jumping up into Sandaland. So, yes. we're, so, so we're all just couple, jumping to each other. A couple of battlers. The coach has gone to the two battlers of the team. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> right, your role today is Correct. to make sure the good players don't play well. Yeah. Don't do all that. That's it. Ben Kepler go, yep, no worries. Yeah, yeah, sweet. So we're just crashing into everyone that day. So, yeah. <laughs> I reckon I had eight hit outs that day. I think I had similar. I'm not, I'm not too sure. We, but, need to, we had to find that. Because yeah. I was going to ask you, because I, I remember playing on you a few times. I reckon this could be rogue. I reckon I actually played on you in my – in my first year, I think I played against Essen in 2007 and mm. one of your games I, I played, that was my first year and right. I remember playing on you. And yeah. when you're talking about Lloydy, <clears throat> I definitely did because I remember tackling Lloydy that day and playing on you and you were both men. Mm. Like I <laughs> I remember Lloydy specifically, sorry, Cap, but I tackled Lloydy and I literally just, it was like a tree trunk. I just yeah. fell off and you were just this, you're like this big, I don't know, gorilla or something. And I remember this is this kid like looking like, what is going on here? Like, who are these men? Like I was a child. I was a seventy five kilo child running around out in the field. Mate, I put I put um oh, fifteen kilos on in like two years at when I got to Essendon. What were you drafted at? Like what eighty oh, eighty seven? And then I was like a hundred and yeah, hundred and five or something like that. So you would have been like that would have been my heaviest playing yes. weight was when I was it would have been around then. Yes. Because then I had to strip some weight off so I could run again. Because <laughs> yeah. I couldn't run. Yeah. I just fucking stood there. <laughs> like a tree. <laughs> so Lordy felt like a tree truck. You played. I was a tree. Way. Yeah. <laughs> well, back on the Ross Lyre. So I got I got a little bit of my, my, uh, a bit of mail come in. Didn't he kick a goal in a, in a big big blowout win and he wasn't too happy with his celebration? Oh, he was filthy, yeah. What happened? Um, we were playing GWS and um, and we were winning by, oh, last quarter, we were winning by heaps, uh, 90 odd points, 100 points. And I'd kicked, I think I kicked one or four, maybe four or five points in a row and I hadn't kicked a goal or something like that. And um, Going well. I was in the – yeah, <laughs> very <laughs> accurate. And the and the crowd was sort of – you know, they were swarming every time I went around it because they just knew I was butchering the footy. So they sort of wanted me to get it, only because we were that far in front. It was actually becoming a comedy thing. <laughs> anyway, the, 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 the ball was sort of in, in our back line and I was at full forward against a fella that I, I don't even know. So I, he would have been his first game potentially. It's probably and Phil, I, Phil Davis probably. I remember – no, it wasn't <laughs> Phil Davis. <laughs> But, but, yeah, a, a, a kid that was sort of, I thought, I'm oh, half a chance of taking a mark here. Anyway, the ball sort of got transitioned out. The runner said, you know, get off the ground. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I sort of was like, yeah, just in a minute. Just, just let <laughs> Ross would have liked let, that. Let me, give you, let me give you the crowd what they want first. So they've switched the ball to the wing, rah, rah, and they've kicked it in. And I've out, taken a mark 15 metres out against against this fella and, and sort of got up. And De Boer was in the goal square by himself. And I sort of could have probably given it to him, but I was like, ah. Give the crowd what they want. So the you know the the crowd was sort of not knowing what was happening next. And fifteen meters in front, I've kicked five points, and I've kicked the goal and sort of just put my hand up to go like you know it shouldn't have taken that long to kick a goal, and I've ran off anyway. Get handed the phone, and I'm like, hello, did you get the message? Uh, uh, what what about getting off the ground? I said, uh, I did. Yes. Why didn't you come? I said, oh, actually, I've, uh, you know, the ball was going to the wing. Oh, bullshit, the ball's going to the wing. Mate, you're waving to the crowd. You finally <laughs> kick a goal in the last. We're 100 points. So you're playing against an 18-year-old and you're waving to the crowd. The crowd doesn't pick the team yet. C-U-N-T. <laughs> and slammed the phone down. And I thought, well, I'm fucked next week. I'm not playing. <laughs> Luckily, I did. But... Um, yeah, he didn't like the wave to the crowd, and I didn't do it to like <laughs> celebrate it. I put my hand up to go like, "Thank God, thank God, I've finally kicked one." So, ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, Ross. I right, mean, Ross. It uh, sounds like every Freo player we've ever spoken to here that played under him loved him. Um, but but he but he he told you what he thought. But <laughs> loved it. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I deserved it. Come off the ground. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, get off. I'll tell you what, though. He didn't like blokes that sort of, if the ball was coming in and you sort of duck and you, you put a short arm out and, you know, you, you, you don't, you're probably not as hard as you should have been. If you just go, I'm not as, I wasn't as hard as I should have been, it's no drama. It's ticked off. Don't do it again. You learn from that. The ones that go, oh, the sun was in my eyes and the ball bounced in a different direction, that's when you see his eyes. <laughs> like a lot of players Wasn't that didn't Duff work one, that out. Didn't, didn't Paul Duffy oh, he, Yeah, he might have had one. But the ball was in his eyes. It, it, that's it, was it, it, um, yeah, just, you, you just, I just found out at an early stage in his coaching career that you just tell it how it is because the vision doesn't lie. 
just let him know that if you weren't hard at the footy or well, you weren't hard at the footy and then he sort of moved on. He he didn't mind that sort of thing. It was when you sort of tried to duck and dive. Yeah, yeah around what actually happened. But what's um what's Kepler Bradley bingo? Oh, that was a mad Monday, yeah. <laughs> um yeah, sort of when we had Mad Mondays and that was my last Mad Monday and I thought how can we make a few I don't know, a few games to make it memorable for myself because it was me, me last one. and <laughs> Threw yourself a party. Uh, threw myself a party the way I wanted it. And, the you know, I had 45 mates that came along and joined in, which was good. But, yeah, I, I um, yeah, sort of uh, the uh, we went to the gate bar in Bristro and, and sort of oh, inside. Gate. Friends of the family. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, we, went, we used to go. I don't know what they do now, but we used to go there quite regularly. But um, first of all, I sort of had a um, – the senior players were inside and the, the younger players were outside and we had a sort of a keg off. Um, and if you lost the keg off, then you had to serve whoever lost, you know, beers for the next period of time. Yes. But little did the um, younger fellas know that I told the um, the bar staff um, probably every second or third pint, just take one out of the seniors when they order one. So <laughs> they were actually drinking our beer too. <laughs> and we comfortably, like they were all sideways outside in the beer garden, <laughs> and we comfortably beat them. So then they came in and started serving us drinks because they, they obviously lost. But every hour on the air we had we had Bradley's Bingo, which is no longer a thing. It was just for that period of time. <laughs> it didn't last day. long. <laughs> didn't last long. It wasn't a great game. So I was surprised it actually came up. Um, and I had ping pong balls in a big bucket. So um, if, you know, if your number got um, sort of read out, then you had to come up and you had to, had to have a drink. Um, but I sort of rigged it to my liking and there was also questions in there, like if your grandmother's won lotto, um, if, you're 100, if, you, if, you, if you're under 175 centimetres, um, if Scarlet's knocked you out. <laughs> so I had all these ones for Bellas who I eventually <laughs> wanted to try and get back because throughout my seven years there, he was an absolute pest on and off the field. So... <laughs> It, it was. It was. I think the boys quite liked it. That yeah, you sort of read it out. But like the the funny ones about Bellas and and stuff like that. It was um yeah, it was quite funny. That's very good. When do you do you remember becoming like a Frio cult figure? I don't remember it. I just uh, it's funny because I reckon when I got to Frio, a lot of supporters were like, "What what what are you doing? Why are you getting this bloke <laughs> this slips guy? over and makes things harder than they have to be?" So I spent I reckon two or three years trying to repay him back and sort of show that, you know, I, I could play a little bit of footy. And, and then, yeah, it was sort of my last three or four years. That's when it sort of became a thing, I suppose. So um, not sure how it happened. And to this point, I still don't <laughs> know. But um, a few people sort of, yeah, jumped what, on the bandwagon. What kind of things were, were going on? What, cheering you onto the ground, Kepler? Were there chants? Were there... Yeah, oh, banners and, yeah, only there's only one Kepler Bradley, which is probably true because <laughs> I don't know too many with that name. But... <laughs> Yeah, I'd, 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 from from my Essendon days to my Freo days, there was a clear change in in sort of Sport. abusing a high draft pick <laughs> and enjoying a low draft a, a low draft pick that's slipping over to occasionally kicks the odd goal. <laughs> what do you mean slipping over? You couldn't keep your feet. Oh, Telstra don't, mate. Do you remember that? <laughs> it was like it was nice. <laughs> And when you're like a giraffe, baby giraffe, it's hard enough as it is. I spent half the time on the ground. <laughs> no, I thought you were a tree trunk. Yeah, well, I <laughs> was at the MCG. <laughs> just for that one year, though, when I was weighing my, height, my biggest weight. But, um, no, I, keeping my feet wasn't a strength. No, I was, I was I sort of, yeah, I slipped over at times. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll whack into a story if you want me to. Absolutely. So... Uh, we played Western Bulldogs in a pre-season game at Mandra, Rushton Park. Yes. When, and I had to play in front of the Hayden Ballantyne wing, which to this day. <laughs> Beautiful place yeah, in the world. He's played like 13 games for him and he's got a wing <laughs> named after him. Um, anyway, I, I went out there and um, at the end of the game, I didn't have the greatest game of all time. Mm. Key forward, two, two handballs. Yep. Probably wasn't ideal. <laughs> so hopped on the hopped on the um, – Hopped on the bus on the way back to Frio and and uh, got home and rang Summer and I said, "Look, mate, I'm." It was the it was, and I don't know if they still do it now, but it was the last preseason game. And then you had a sort of a AFL had a buy, and then you AFL round one, yeah. and the waffle round one started in the in the buy, um, in the week off. And I sort of said, "Look, I think I need to go and play waffle um, to lay leather on boot because I didn't do that today." And he said, I'll leave it with me. I'll ask Ross and 
I'll get back to you. I said, oh, okay, no drama. So Monday I sort of roll out onto the training track and, and Ross goes, Kip, come over here, mate. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this isn't going to be great. So he sort of tells me you want to play waffle this week. And I said, yeah, he goes, you should have the weekend off. I said, oh, did you watch the game, Ross? He's like, <laughs> yeah. I said, I actually didn't lay, my boot didn't hit the footy. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I had two handballs. He said, you competed hard though, didn't you? I said, yeah. He goes, don't worry about the possessions. I said, oh, okay. No dramas. He goes, mate, we know what you give us. He goes, you give us effort. You give us. And at this point, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing AFL footy, you know, that's, that's one attribute I've got's effort. And he goes, you just give us effort and you give us, oh, fuck, I can't think of the rest. <laughs> but I ended up playing against West Coast in round one, which was phenomenal. So, um, But, yeah, it was, it was quite funny how he set himself up for five positives. <laughs> you could only think of one. Got one out. <laughs> one positive. <laughs> what do you remember? Um, so when you're at Essendon, Obviously, the Western Derby is not really a, a, that big of a thing for you. You might observe that it's happening. But when you come over, um, or I guess you're a WA boy, so playing in your first derby, what was that like? Yeah, it was um, – I mean, it's the closest thing to finals, in my opinion, If, if um, in the home and away season. Um, I played in a couple of Anzac Day games and that sort of thing. But um, derbies, there's a – you know, as you know, Scoey, there's a bit of a vibe and a rivalry happening. So, um, yeah, I mean – any time there's 45,000 people, you know, back in the day when we were at Subi, um, screaming and yelling. And um, back then it was sort of always tight. There, was, there wasn't rarely blowouts. So it was, um, it, was, it was always pretty good games and pretty competitive games. So it was, um, yeah, it was certainly sort of – and I didn't play a hell, lot of, a hell of a lot of finals, but to me it felt like, you know, you, everyone went up just a, a notch to try and get the, the win. You played your first final in 2012. Um, you won against Geelong. Do you remember that? Because you, yes. like you said, like you, you didn't play a lot of finals footy throughout, but it must have felt like a an achievement, a, a, a moment. Like playing finals footy, that's what you play for. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, <clears throat> we were severe underdogs. I think that might have been the first time we won at the MCG in a final or, or something like that. Um, but Pav kicked seven or eight, maybe uh, again playing that decoy role. <laughs> <laughs> but my soul, my soul, um, I suppose role that day was to stop Harry Taylor laying off me because we knew that, you know, Lonigan would play on Pavlich and then Taylor would play on the least, um, I suppose, dangerous forward, which we, we knew it was going to be me, which was a feather in my cap. <laughs> so he was always going to help Lonigan do that. Um, and it sort of worked. I sort of got a little oh, – I did me bit and Harry ended up going forward in the last quarter and, and Pav ended up kicking seven. I think we won by 20-odd points and – I got dropped after that game. Oh. I don't know if, you, if, if that's on your notes, It actually is. It, was what, it just says you didn't play the next game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got dropped for Zach Clark because Tippett was too good in the ruck, which is fine. But um, <laughs> Sounds like it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, no, that, and, and they're the sorts of things that Ross used to do. With He, he just knew what, what um, opposition clubs were, were going to do and he, he always had strategy around trying to help – you know, us win a game of footy, but I, I played me bit there, I think, and and Pav ended up kicking seven. But it was a phenomenal game. Like we we were we were severe underdogs, and and we needed someone to do something miraculous, and up pop Pav and and, and dominate it. Do you remember what Tippett did that following game? Is that, oh, I don't sorry. remember. No, do you? I, no, I don't. I just didn't know if it was something. Adelaide won. You held think, on to convincingly, <laughs> and and I think um, Taylor Walker was 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 quite convincing in that win, but. Um, no Dockers, no no Bradley, no Dockers. Well, that was sort of it, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. So. I had a bit of that over my <laughs> career as well. <laughs> the next year you did the ACL pretty early in the season. Yeah, yeah. What, what happened there? I, um, I sort of tried to kick a goal from 40 metres out across my body and Dylan Grimes jumped over my leg and I heard a few cracks and hit the deck and I, I, I thought I snapped my leg, um, sort of both bones in my leg. That's what it sort of felt like. Uh -huh. um, and the physio came over and said, what happened? I said, oh, I heard three cracks. Uh, it's not good. I think I've broken my leg. And he sort of did the test and said, no, nah, your leg's not broken. And um, got to the sideline and found out that it was my knee. Like when I went to stand up, my knee, my leg sort of was sliding out of the socket, I suppose. Um, and what ended up happening was when they eventually did the scan and they said, you You've snapped your three ligaments. So that was just pure force of going 
like Whoa. three snaps and then so i had yeah lateral medial you know acl that, that all had to be it was like a car crash um oh. but this is what i mean about ross like you it was like i only had the one year deal as i did most years but on the bench you've been told you you're done and i, I sort of thought that's that was me done and it was but as soon as it happened i was like i'm 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 fucked here because I needed I needed to be 100 percent to contribute and play at this level, and I sort of knew and knew well, I wouldn't come back too great from that. Mm. Um, but like during the quarter, Ross came down, asked me how it was down to the bench, and I said, "Oh, I think I've done the knee, mate." He goes, "Don't worry about it. You'll be here next year." And then he went back up and blah blah blah. But then, to his credit, they gave me another year. I could never come back because then my hamstring started playing up. But I don't know. That's just the sort of in game. In game, yeah. and 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 it was. I think we ended up winning by two or three points. Wow! And 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 for him to come down and and sort of know the situation and know what you would have been thinking. Correct. Yeah. Sort of going. This guy's you know been sort of scrapping for ten years, and they he he'd be in his head think, thinking he's done. Mm. Um. To his credit, you know, he gave me another year, and I wasn't. And all my rehab revolved around trying to get back just to play a couple of games to say thanks, but I just could never get there. But. That's the sort of stories that you hear about Ross, where you know he, he's pretty hard on you, but at the same time, if you do the right thing and you and you and you try your guts out, and you're not taking the piss, then he he looks after you. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. You missed the granny that year, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was um, we played Hawthorne, and it's sort of it's funny. Like what I was there, they flew me over to watch, and um, Hawthorne had played in you know four or five grannies in a row or whatever it was, and a few premierships, and they sort of ran through the banner and and and. Like it was business time for them, and when we ran through the banner, I could sort of see some of our guys like going, "Wow, fuck, we're at a grand final," and, and then we sort of had a slow start, and so I was like, "Yeah, it was, it was." I, I reckon you know that that sort of hurt us in the first ten to fifteen minutes yeah. of the game because then it ended up being I think ten points in it at the end of the game, and we sort of got our momentum back. But but yeah, it was sort of you could tell the you know Hawthorne had been there, done that, and our guys were a bit like. Overall, with, with the with the situation, but um, to their credit, you know, we fought back and made it a pretty good game, but just missed out. Did you? What What was it like watching it for, personally? Not not the game, but like how, how you felt. Were you fine? Were you, you know, jealous? Were you? Oh no, nah, not jealous. I mean, I would have loved to have been out there, but I I sort of knew early on that I wasn't going to play, so it wasn't you know it wasn't like I played a prelim and then got knocked out. Yeah. But um, I, I just wanted us to win for Bellas and Spider and guys of Grover and guys that have been around for a while and and put so much time at Pav and, you know, and, and we hadn't won one and, yeah, I was sort of, you know, being a little kid in the in the stand really trying to get us over the line but wasn't to be. But, yeah, you just sort of – the amount of time and effort that the, the boys put in, you just want them to, to, to you know, taste success at the end of the day and it wasn't meant to be, so. You wouldn't be surprised without St Kilda's gone this year. Given, mm. given Ross, you know. No, nah, no. Nah. So he's got them playing a certain way. And I, thought, I reckon if you look at their list, you probably wouldn't say they're, 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 they've got the best list of all time. But nah. he, he, that's what he does. He, he gets the best out of what he's got. Um, and and and, he, and he's even to the media, you know, he's pretty honest with, <laughs> with how he reckons he went or the team went or, you know, how they're going at the time and that sort of thing. So it's quite quite refreshing. But I think as a player, when you when you go out to battle with Ross, you, you – when you've done something, you know, you know it's not right, or you know it's right. Do you know what I mean? Like you know what you're meant to do on a footy field. So I reckon when you come off the ground, you sort of know, yeah, you, you know, know how, anyway. how you played. Yeah, yeah, because there's no grey area. It's sort of like this is the way we're doing it. Mm. So and there's no surprise that he goes to St Kilda and and does what he does. Does what Ross does. Now, is it true you don't have a sense of smell? Correct. How's that? What's happened there? I got born with it. I do not know. I've, you don't know what anything smells like. No. Nothing. No, nothing. So yeah. what like smelling salts? What would happen? Would you? I don't know. I've never had it, but yeah, I don't know. I probably would just sleep through it. What about gas? Gas. I uh, I had an incident with gas. I um I, I turned the stove on in Melbourne, um, and I've left it on without the without the fire like without a lit. This is when you're in Essendon. Yeah. yeah, and I was sort of sitting in the in the um watching TV and my mate came home, you know, a few hours later and he's like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? He's like, mate, you've got to get out of here. Like, We've got like a gas leak or something. But I've I've not turned the, oh, the gas off. I'm just breathing in gas. So I'm surprised I'm still here. But 
Yeah, he reckons it was. You could definitely smell something in the air. So he made me sort of get my car wind the windows down and drive around for a few hours. So um, <laughs> that that was a close call. But yeah, Gee. never never been able to never wow. been able to smell. It's um, is, there any, is there any positives to it? Oh, I suppose you, you're, a, you're a kid. Yeah, mm, poo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. correct. Yep, yeah, no nah, poo doesn't phase me. I can pick it up quite easily. That doesn't phase me either. So it's. Um, <laughs> I that's not certainly. about a smell thing, though. Yeah. That's something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something else. But no, I, I can't smell. And yeah, that's probably the only positive smelling things that aren't great. Good. You got anything else for Cap? No. <laughs> All right. We're not done uh, yet, though, mate. That's, us, that's enough from Dan and I. We've got a little segment called Scotial Media. Not social, Scotial. Yeah. You'd like that. I can see the smell in your face. Yeah. This is, this is where the people get to ask you the questions. You've heard enough from Dan and I. This is, this is the people stuff. So given that you're the cult hero that you are, I'm expecting some good stuff, and there's quite a few. So let's get, let's get to them. Bree underscore 007. Uh, my mum had a picture of you hanging on her wall. What's it like being an utter chick magnet while maintaining an AFL career? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's sort of um, – that's um, – that's quite flattering. It's, uh, yeah, I was sort of the opposite when I when I'd walk to a bar after a game. It was sort of the, the Sheila sort of scattered away from me. So I'm, yeah, I'm glad I had a fan somewhere. You did the next one, uh, <coughs> Riley underscore Bone Ray says, uh, "Who was the biggest menace teammate?" Oh, it's Bellas. Yeah. yeah, no, he was he was yeah pinching you. Bloody. Well, even in like training and stuff? Yeah, having a massage. I was in full kit one day, right? And this was nearly the end of Bellas, mind you, because he was nearly omitted with being drowned. Um, <laughs> we, we had an indoor pool at, at, at Frio, and um, I'd just been, I, I, I played reasonably well. I, I, I sort of thought I'd keep my spot, but got dropped again. And Bellas <laughs> and that didn't know. So I went up to, I think it was Harves' office, and he sort of said, Look, you're going to miss out this week. So I was sort of walking down, just getting my head around it. And I've walked into – we used to do yoga in the um, – where the pool was. And I'm sort of in full kit. Like I've got runners and and Bellas pushes me in the water. And that was like – I lost me – I flipped me lid. See red. Yeah, yeah. So then I've jumped out, grabbed him, threw him in the water and like fully like – I think I was trying to kill him. To, to this day for the 15 <laughs> seconds I had him, I think I was actually happy with ending him. <laughs> And Pav jumped in, and he was actually – you could see from his face that he was worried that he knew that I was ready to sort of – Go to jail for Anyway, he, he separated us and that sort of thing. But <laughs> I tell you what, it was priceless, his little face, after that happened because since then he really, really backed off. And then after that I said, mate, I've just been dropped. You've just thrown me in the water fully clothed. That's the reason for the reaction. Oh. So. We're still very good mates. That is so funny. But um, his little face after that, sort of, you could, it was, yeah, I'd you pay could a thousand see- bucks to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> the whites of his eyes. I just imagine. <laughs> How good. Uh, Daniel Chick did that one day to, uh, fuck, who was it? Exactly the same instance. I reckon Chicky had been dropped and he was in the pool and someone like flicked, his, flicked his ear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barely touched him. And Chicky had, I'm pretty sure it was Tim Hall, it was one of my first, Tim Hall out of James Thompson, Claremont boy, yeah. had him in a headlock under the under the water yeah. and we could not get, we could not, no. we, there were six of us on Chicky <laughs> and he just had this look on his face, like exactly the same one. I'm happy to end this man's life. <laughs> you can't do anything about it. You shouldn't have flicked my ear. Don't flick me ear. <laughs> uh, All right. So you and Daniel Chick in the same basket. Uh, MJ underscore Graham. Uh, who delivered the best sprays, Ross or Sheeds? No, nah, Ross. Really? Yeah. So Sheeds wasn't a sprayer? Um, he did say to me once, uh, I had Richo who had kick nine on me, uh, quite convincing showing. I think he's actually got third or fourth highest ranking points of all time for that game. And you played on it. 12 contested marks. So it shows that I was sort of there, but just wasn't good enough. <laughs> he kicked nine straight, mind you. But – um. And I played on him for the whole game. And it was one out with a big Richo. Like, he was a phenomenal player. And, and she's just left you. Just left me. Yeah, just <laughs> left me with him. Um, it was Dean Rioli's 100th, so he'll remember that. Um, but after the game, he, he, I was getting my head around sort of being bent over by one of the best players of all time. And, um, and he sort of said, and Kepa, do I need to send Matthew Lloyd to fullback and wreck his fucking career too? <laughs> Because you can't play on Richo. And I'm sitting there going, I'm fucking 19. I used to play on a wing. I've never defended in my life. This guy's a superstar. 
Why were you yeah. there? It was. Um, <laughs> what were you playing there? Why do you have? Could you talk? Uh, yeah, I was just. Um, she's thought I was going to be the next Dustin Fletcher, I think, and plays <laughs> full back. And but meanwhile, Dustin Fletcher's playing on bloody Rory Hilton or someone. <laughs> it's like just do the do the swap. It's- Put the best ball of all time on Correct. <laughs> He's played a thousand fucking games. Let's put him on the guy that's playing three All-Australians. Yes. And they can battle it out one out in the cage. But no, I, I stayed on him. But yeah, he, he that spray resonates with him. It, um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, career. No, Ross was well, Ross was the best at sprays. You they were actually quite funny sprays too with, with Ross. So it's actually quite humorous. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, you would have been happy with Zach Dawson at the footy club then. I yeah, mean, legend. He, be, he became... Well, he became the guy on the goal square. Mm. He did? Have, yeah. Absolutely. And then you didn't want the ball in his hands because he couldn't kick that great. <laughs> really, could he? But, yeah, no. He, um, good man, Dawes. He's a very good man, Dawes. TMR, uh, Tio Marg. Uh, was the best moment in footballing history Kepler stepping Judd and kicking a snag on the run from 40? Oh, I've got to admit, that is a highlight of mine. <laughs> but I had no idea that was bloody Judd, bloody trying to tackle me. I was just trying to. Make it up as I go. So I was lucky enough to get around him and, and kick the goal. But by no means was I running going, oh, it's Chris Judd. I'm just going to get around. If I'd have known that, I'd just have kicked it out in the full. But <laughs> I was lucky enough to, to, to get around him. And, that's, and, the, that's the equivalent of posterising someone in the AFL, I reckon, mm. stepping, kicking goals mm. and having them on the ground behind you. <laughs> I, I, can't, I don't remember this one, but I'm assuming Juddy ended up on the ground somewhere behind you. I don't, I'm not too sure. Reaching but. out with his shoulders. <laughs> you were too busy kicking the goal. Adrian Smith, 82. Uh, how long did your dad continue to coach the mighty Kingsley Cats after you were drafted? And who was tougher on you, your dad or Sheeds? Uh, dad finished when I finished, I think. I think he, he, he was sort of on the board or helped out behind the scenes. But, but he coached me and my brother. Well, I've got an older brother. He, he coached my brother for a year or two. But he coached me for um, four or five years. Um but when I moved on, he, he sort of moved on. But but he, Dad was one of those ones that, um, yeah, he didn't he didn't um, tell me how to play or anything. He just let me do my thing. And then if I asked him, he'd sort of you know tell me what I sort of did did well and that sort of thing. But he wasn't a, a person that desperately wanted me to get to AFL level or anything like that. He just knew I enjoyed it and I had a pretty high standard myself anyway. But um, I, I I would probably think it would have been Sheeds. Because uh, he used to just leave me on absolute superstars week in, week out, which to the point where it burnt me out. Um, so was that not your biggest bath, Richo? Or was it, was no, that was well, by clearly my biggest bath. I don't want to go – I don't want you to dig through all the stats because you might find a few more. But <laughs> uh, like there was one one year when I was getting ready to play. It was like 2004. Five maybe, and um, there was like six centre forwards in Mike Sheehan's top ten. You know he does the top ten, yeah. the top fifty players. So he had Barry Hall, Jonathan Brown, Warren Treadray, Nick Rewalt, um, Richo, Richo, uh, Lloyd, maybe Lloydie, yeah. Pavlich. Like there was just guns everywhere, yes. and it was almost like when you played West Coast and you're not actually handsome. It was a buy. <laughs> <laughs> Big but red. it was it was membership player at Big Red, absolutely. But 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 that's the sort of that's the sort of caliber that was playing um, back in those days, and 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 yeah, it sort of I suppose that's what spat me out in the end. Yeah, I'll say that as well. Same as me. Diggers ninety three. Uh, how long were you in the Saint before the security realised you had shaved your head? Oh, that was yeah, um, <laughs> oh, about an hour. Yeah. What did you do? What happened? Oh, I was West Perth had uh, their their silly Sunday or whatever it was, and. Um, Back in the day when we weren't aligned with Peel, we, we were aligned with the, the footy club that, yeah. that you sort of played with. and um, But we bombed out in the finals and then Saturday night, you know, you go out as you do. And then Sunday we had to meet at the Seine at 10 o'clock or whatever it was. So I got there and had a few beers and um, Bouncer came up at about 2 o'clock and said, look, you've had enough. And I was sort of like, mate, I'm not – it's basically just West Perth people here. I'm not. He's like, no, no, no. You've, you've, you've had enough. So I said, oh, no, no, no dramas in my head. I'm sort of plotting a plan. I used to live 100 meters down the road, so I was plotting a plan to get back in. So anyway, I was walking, walking down, walk, got home, sat on the couch, and thought, ah, stuff it. I'll go and shave my head. And I had sort of not hair like this. I had sort of, you know, reasonable hair. <laughs> so I got the clippers out and shaved it. Got in the shower, put some, you know, toothpaste, 
changed my clothes, walked back up to the site an hour later, <laughs> security guard on the, on, the, uh, on the door and I was like, hey, mate, how you going? He's like, yeah, good, straight through, <laughs> up to the bar, pint. So I had a couple of more beers and then, <laughs> then the bouncer comes up and he goes, mate, didn't I just kick you out? <laughs> I said, yeah, you did. He goes, fuck, don't mind that. <laughs> he goes, but you got to leave, mate. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, went out and that, that that was the end of that. But yeah, it lasted a, lasted about an hour. It's yeah. good it would have been flat if you rocked up at the front door and said, "Mate, no, get I'm out." Gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna say it to you, mate. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I was gonna get my hair together. That's very good. Uh, fresh uh, underscore sports underscore collection. Uh, I just recently picked up one of your long sleeve jumpers from your Frio days. Uh, your one big unit XXL. Did you ever wear the longies? Never, never wore a long sleeve. No. No, uh, it wasn't, wasn't one for long sleeve. I found I needed as much air hitting me as possible to cool me <laughs> down because I was always fatigued. <laughs> I can't imagine Ross would have been a fan of a long sleeve jumper. No, no, not, 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 yeah, not too. I don't think any of us did back back no. then. You know, I think Sonny Walters, you know, waltzes around in one now yes. occasionally, but that's, that's yeah, we, we didn't really, and James H, but we didn't really wear them back then. Isaac Dowling for? Uh, what's your best Michael Barlow story? Stroke. Michael Barlow story. Um, oh, I don't, I don't have one. Um, well, so when we had selection and it was sort of on an off edge whether I was playing or not, we used to sit three rows back, and I they used to roll out the whiteboard with the magnets on, and I really struggled to see the magnets. Um, and I at times I couldn't actually work out if I was actually in the team or out of the team. And it was sort of flip of the coin stuff. So I actually didn't know. So Michael used to sit next to me and uh, he used to sort of squeeze my leg if I was in and then sort of tap me if I was out. And that's the way I knew whether I was in or out. And then one day um, they roll the, roll the board out and um, I'm sort of looking, looking, looking. And he's tapped me on the leg. And I think I might have kicked four the week before when he's tapped me on the leg, which means I'm not playing. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, I'm sitting there like this and he's, you know, inside just absolutely giggling his ass. I'm playing. <laughs> Set up. I just couldn't see it. <laughs> anyway, it's finished and I'm just like, what am I going to – he's like, mate, you, you honestly can't see that. I'm like, he's like, you're playing. I'm like, I've spent half an hour. I don't even know who we're playing on the weekend. Cause I've, it's all about Kev. I've been spending half an hour going, what the – where did it all go wrong? What did I do? But I was actually playing. You don't know what the game plan is. No. You don't all word, Ross. No, he gave me a roll. I didn't listen to that. So I would have got dropped the following <laughs> week. Or because of Mick. Oh, that's very good. Well done. Uh, I don't know what this means, but Terry and Jones. Uh, need to hear about him in the bus post-season. Him in the bus. Mm. That's what it says. Need to hear about him in the bus post-season. Do something in the bus in the oh. season. In the bus? No, I, do. I okay. actually don't know what's... Drive a bus? No. No, definitely. Don't own a bus? Don't, no. own, a, don't <laughs> own a bus. Liam <laughs> Wallace. Uh, tell us about wearing your mouth guard out on a night on the town. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? That's actually quite funny. I don't know. I can't remember that. Did you? It might know? have been after concussion, maybe. Did, <laughs> did you do it? Oh, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, uh, yeah, it, it, that wouldn't surprise me. So I, I'm not sure why I did that. <laughs> Probably to get the reaction you guys are, are doing. <laughs> Correct. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. Maybe you put it in, you put it on to get back in the site. Shave maybe it. yeah, just <laughs> yeah, 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 change the team. <laughs> Seven teeth done. How are you? Uh, last or oh, two to go. L R uh, triple underscore Clark. Uh, what is a Kepler? What is a Kepler? Apparently, yeah. Uh, I, we don't write these questions. Yeah, just so. reading them out. Um, Kepler, I, I mean, if you want to know what the name is, I got named after a South African cricketer, but that, that's… Kepler Vessels? Yeah. Or yeah. Vessels. Yeah. So Dad was watching the cricket one day and thought, what a ripping name, and then gave it to me. And, you know, you go to the bank and that, and they all think, I'm saying my last name first, my first name last. So it's actually been quite a disaster Bradley Kepler. trying to… <laughs> Get money out of my own account because they're all like, "Don't believe me that my name's Kepler." But it's a, it's a not it's not a bad name. Have you actually had that? Or is that a joke? No, Pe- it's true. <laughs> Mate, I go and get coffees, and ex- instead of explaining my name, I just say Brad. <laughs> Ubers. No. Yeah. No. I'll tell you a funny story. No. no. I lived in Barn Street, which was next to the Sun. Yep. No, not well. And there was a cafe up the road, little sister, and I, I, I. I 
I used to go there and get my coffee yeah. and I used to, you, you text it in. So I'd text in, you know, long Mac topped up, Brad. And I went there, went there, went there, and the Brewster said to me, hey, can I just clear something up? And I said, yeah. This is when I was playing. Yes. Um, you're Kepler, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, why the fuck are you texting Brad? And I said, oh, mate, you're one of the few people that sort of know it. Like, I'm happy. Can I text Kepler now? And he's like, yes, you can. Like, what? <laughs> I said, oh, just explaining it like to people, it's just a, a nightmare. So I, I go by Brad when I'm uh-huh. – Wow. Yeah. But with the text, like you, they can read it and they can just say it. It's like different when you have to say your name, Kepler. Yeah, but they don't. They don't. You'd be surprised. They <laughs> you, don't know. You can't you explain think it's this easy. to him. Yeah. I feel like he's, he's been there. I feel like Brad would <laughs> know this. Mate. I feel like Brad knows. Change your name to Kepler. <laughs> yeah, just for a couple of weeks and give us a ring how it, okay. how it all pans out. Kepler Const. <laughs> Kepler Const. <laughs> Tell you what, whiskers off you, Kepler Const. Yeah. Uh, last one from the Eggman. Uh, how does Kepler Bradley like his eggs? How does Brad like his eggs? Uh, scrambled. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, scrambled eggs. All right. Yeah. Good. Done. Done. Have fun, mate. Easy. Thanks uh, for having us, guys. That is uh, Bradley Kepler, everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been good to join us, mate. Um, socials, you know where to find us. Backchat double underscore. You can find everything we do over at backchatstudios.com.au. Um, our patrons will have one more story for you. Stick around for that. Fleet Network, Garrick, thank you for some of those questions, mate. Anything to say to Garrick on the back end of that? No. Nah. No, I hope you're going well, mate. Obviously, I haven't seen you for a while, but I hope you're going well. <laughs> He's not listening. Uh, oh, there no, you no, go. No, we, can do, we can delete that bit, so <laughs> all good, Gary. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing, mate. Swimply, uh, Whippersnapper Whiskey, Muggle River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co., Leadable Cameras. Thank you for your support. Our VIPs over for Patreon. Uh, you can get that there. Kevin Bradley, thank you very much. No worries. Thanks, guys. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>